All right, first up, we have Lubbock Christian, winners tonight over North Georgia by a final score of 99 to 54. Coach Steve Gomez, Manny Chitsey, and Olivia Robertson are up here. Coach, we'll go ahead and begin with you with an opening comment. You know, 40 minute basketball game never tells a whole story of what goes on. That was, I mean, incredibly fortunate for us. I mean, obviously, North Georgia is a great team, and it was one of those nights everything was locked in for us, and, and they just had some bad. Some bad breaks and didn't shoot it as well as I know at times they can. Uh, so once that starts, it's just hard to. We've been on the other side of that at times, so I understand, especially to end the season. But I mean, I appreciate them. They're a good team. I appreciate Coach Burson. What a, what a great year. But our girls, I, I just felt like we're from the start dialed in. Uh, obviously, it was an incredibly great strategy talking we we're going to play man defense and switch picks, and I had to change out of that in about four minutes because they scored nine points quick. So that shows you coaching is not what wins these games. These players win it because my strategy stunk. And so uh, they did a good job starting out and scoring on us. And we had to make some changes. But on the offensive end, we just had a lot of kids doing their job. And that's always for us. If we just have every player play well and do their job, we'll have a chance to win. Uh, and that's all you can ask for this time of year. Uh, Scott has a wireless. If anybody has any questions, please raise your hand. And he'll hand you the wireless. I'll take it. Uh, Coach Matt Vereen from Springfield, Missouri, Color 10. Uh, you had to think when, when the bracket came out that a matchup with Drury was, was a strong likelihood. I don't know how much chance you got to look at them, but uh, another team that knows how to win big, what's kind of the preparation look like for them? Yeah, I, <laughs> honestly, I haven't watched – I've seen them play because of scouting other teams that they played this year at times in the past, but, but to, I saw them tonight play that game before us, so and obviously they're incredibly good. But, you know, we have assistant coaches, hopefully, that have thought about that, but all I can consider was North Georgia. That's all only thing I even thought about. Obviously, a great team. I mean, Drury, you know, to go undefeated, that's, those aren't easy to do. You know, there have been some of those through the years. And, uh, so they've been awesome, and they're really uh, aggressive, and they get on runs, and you just have to really not have any weak-minded possessions against them because they expose things so fast. And so that's a great challenge. I mean, what a great opportunity to play the best team in the country you know, at this time of year, and uh, see how tough we've gotten over the year. Brandon Trump, Harlem Conference. Maddie, 11 of 12 tonight for you. Tied a career high with 28 points. Um, but that first quarter, 76.5% field goal percentage. What's it like as a player out there on the floor whenever the team is starting that hot and keeping it that hot? You, you guys didn't have a quarter where you shot below 45 or 46%. It's definitely something that we work on together and just we want to take the right shot and what's right for us and no matter who it is. Um, so it just happened to be me that was open. But you just have to be ready to take any shot. I think all of us are. The Lord wanted me to make him tonight. <laughs> so. It's not very good theology. <laughs> For both of the players, um, when you look at taking on a 35 and 0 team, ranked number one in the country, do you lick your chops? Do you think to yourself, this would be a great opportunity? Uh, Libby, why don't you go first? Well, I'm just kind of one of those people that's fired up to play, no matter who it is. And <clears throat> 35 and 0, I mean, what better than to knock a team down? And I, I mean, I'm happy to say that all of us are go <clears throat> super confident, and you know. You got to go into games confident, and they're a highly respectable team, and they're a very good team. But we're not going to go into it scared or passive. And heck yeah, we're looking our chops. <laughs> Maddie, your thoughts on that? I mean, I totally agree with Olivia. I'm not as you know <laughs> high, high strung maybe, <laughs> but I totally agree with what she's saying. <laughs> Coach, congratulations. Back-to-back uh, -back or consecutive 30-win seasons for the first time in program history. Uh, is there more than one way to skin a cat? I mean, basically, what element do you find of the team and the players you have? What element is it that creates those wins? We just have some sacrificial kids. I mean, for years now, we've seen you know individuals put their own uh, their, what, their own desires in the background because they want to do what's best for the team and uh, that's the only way it can work. We've just been very fortunate to have great kids from great families 
that understand really it's not all about basketball even. Uh, you know, if it was, that could lead to a volatile situation. If, if all that mattered was if you won or lost, then you'd be happy sometimes and in a bad mood a lot of times. So uh, I just appreciate the balance our kids have, and, and hopefully they've been good at basketball, but they've learned how to, to give it themselves for the best of others, and it, it has worked out. When they make shots, it obviously looks even better, and so there, there's some playing involved in it. It's not just an attitude. Uh, but these girls have grown together this year uh, and really matured. Our leadership has been steady. And we've just been playing pretty well over the course of a number of weeks now. Coach Govins, talk about how important it was. I know you never go into a game planning to win by 45, but how important it was to be able to rest players towards the end of that game, knowing that you're playing in under 24 hours tomorrow. Well, yeah, and it's not going to be a half-court walk-it-up game. I mean, tomorrow's going to take every ounce of, of sweat and cardiovascular energy that we've got, and so, uh, but what else do you want to do this time of year? You might as well expend every bit you have and see what happens, and so what a great opportunity. It, yeah, to rest legs is good. You know, Olivia's played 40 minutes a game for a while and, uh, lately, and uh, she's just in incredible shape, and uh, so she may have to tomorrow, but tonight it was nice maybe to give her a few steps off so her feet aren't uh, as worn out. Yeah, all our girls. I just thought it was a great team win. Everybody got to participate and play. Coach, I kind of watched you before the game. You kind of got up and walked around. I don't know if it was pacing or not, but the challenges of playing the last game of the day you know, on an atmosphere like this, and the ladies can test this as well. How did you guys handle playing the last game of the day? Yeah, and, you know, fortunately in uh, Colorado we had an 8.30 game, a late game, and so the day sort of can drag along. Uh, the first game is great of, the, of a tournament. If you win, it's great. If you don't, it's sort of a, a bummer. So they've just learned, I really think they've learned to handle any situation from 6 a.m. practices to, you know, sort of running to, to weightlifting to different time of the day practice to different time of the day games. Uh, I think they're mentally and emotionally nimble enough to hopefully handle whatever comes. Anything further? All right, coach, ladies, congratulations. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Oh, Christian, we'll play Drury tomorrow night.